Saxon Advanced Mathematics, Lesson 38. We have three different topics this time. You guys, buckle in. Um, the first one is a fun one. We're going to talk about permutations and fundamental counting principle. We talked about this last year. Um, let's dive in, and I'll explain as we go. How many different ways can the numbers 3, 5, 7, and 8 be arranged in order if no repetition is permitted? Let's take a look. A lit. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at what that means. We've got four numbers. So what we can imagine is I like to imagine like a tray a long skinny tray with four slots in it. And I like to imagine that these are on wooden tiles, kind of like Scrabble tiles. And we're thinking about how we can put them in. Now this one's no repetition. So it helps to think of these as actual physical tiles, right? Because once we use them up, we use them up. We can't, we can't put three in each box because we only have one tile with a three on it. So what we're gonna write in these boxes is how many choices we have for the number of tiles to put in here. So in the first box, we can put in any one of these tiles. So we have four choices. And I'm just gonna write the word choices in here so that you remember what that represents because I don't wanna confuse you with this four being one of the numbers. These are the numbers we're choosing from. This is how many choices we have. Now, we put one of these tiles in this box. So one of them is used up. How many choices do we have left for what to put in here? Well, we have three choices left. Now, two of the tiles are used, so there's two more choices. And then when we get down to the last one, there's only one choice, right? How do we know how many different ways there are to arrange these tiles in all? We multiply. Four times three times two times one, and that equals 24 ways these tiles could be arranged, and ways is a word that means permutation. A permutation is a unique way that they could be arranged, okay? So that's the basic idea. Remember, we have to pay attention to whether we're allowed to repeat the elements or not. I'll highlight a different example for you in a minute, but before we go on, I wanna point out that what's hard about these problems is that you really have to um, logic out each scenario using your brain power. There isn't just like a magical formula that works for every single problem. You have to keep your wits about you and try to follow the little story of what the challenge is. But that to me is the fun part because they are like little challenges. Okay, here's the next one. How many four letter signs can be made from the letters in the word equal. If repetition is permitted. So I write repetition okay. All right, this is really important that we have this information available to us because it drives a lot about how many choices we have, right? So again, I have a tray with four boxes in it. Is it weird that we only have four places in our tray, but we have five letters? No, that's not weird at all, it's fine. What we have this time though, instead of just having an individual tile with each letter on it, we have like a whole stack of them. So we have four E's, four Q's, four U's, four A's, four L's, because we're allowed to repeat. So when we go to the first box, how many choices do we have to put in that box? Well, we could put any one of them in. So we have five choices. What about when we get to the second spot? Well, we can repeat, so that means we can use any of the five. And so on, because we're allowed to repeat, we can use any one of those five letters when we fill up each box. I'm, this is the last time I'm gonna write choices, but you understand what that means. So 
to find out how many permutations exist in this scenario, it's five times five, it's five to the fourth, which is what, 625, right? So 625 ways. We can pack those letters in there. Cool. Okay. 38.3. This is a fun one. A multiple choice test has eight questions and there are four possible choices to each. Eight questions, four choices per question, right? That makes sense because most multiple choice tests have like A, B, C, and D. Um, where am I? There it is. How many different sets of answers are possible? Okay, so what we can do is we can draw out the eight questions, right? The questions are kind of like the tray. The test is like the tray. The questions are the individual boxes. And in each box, we, the test taker, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we have four choices per question. So each one of these boxes gets a four in it, right? Because there's A, B, C, and D to each question. Which means if you multiply that out, that's four to the eighth, right? And if you multiply that out, it is 65,536. This is how teachers know that the chances of two students putting the exact same answer on even a test as small as just an eight question test is highly unlikely. The odds are one in 65,000 that students are going to put the exact same answer for every question on the test. So if two students come out with the exact same answers on the test, it makes a teacher's eyebrow go up and then go, hmm. Were they sitting close to each other, I wonder? Because it's just not very likely that it would happen that you would get exactly the same. Okay, another one. Notice how each one's just a little bit different, a little bit subtle, a little bit, um, it requires fresh thinking. 38.4, how many three letter signs can be made from the word numeral If no repetition, I always write no rep or rep okay. All right, so it's just three letters. But again, we don't have a whole stack of ends. We just have the one. So once we use it, we can't use it again. No repetition. All right, so in the first box, how many choices do we have? Well, we could put in any one of these letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven choices. How about the second one? Well, there's no repetition, so one is out, but that leaves us with six more, and then five again. So, this is how many ways we can arrange these seven letters in groups of three, and that represents, that's 30, so it's 210 ways. That's the right answer. Okay? Every problem is just a little bit different and that's what makes them fun. At least that's what I think. B, designated roots. All right, in the past, we have taken expressions like this, x squared um, plus three x minus 28 equals zero. Okay, there is a trinomial also known as a quadratic equation in the standard form, and we know how to factor this. We know several ways to factor it, but we're really good at factoring by inspection, right? And this one we can say x plus seven, x minus four, right? Then we know using the zero factor theorem that if our 
product is zero, then one or the other of these has also got to be zero, right? So either x plus seven equals zero, or x minus, x minus four equals zero. The only way to get zero as a product is if zero is one of the factors. So one or the other of those has to be equal to zero. And then we can solve and say either x equals minus seven or x equals four. And we have solved that quadratic equation. We call this the solution. Sometimes we call these the roots. That's another technical way to describe. It's a jargony phrase, but we can call those roots as well, right? So what we're gonna learn how to do in this problem is we're gonna learn how to take the roots. Here we worked from the equation to the roots. We're gonna learn how to take the roots and go back and build the original quadratic equation. All right, it's gonna be so fun. And I reviewed this process with you so that you'll understand, oh, if we go here, then this is how we go backwards, right? 38.5. Write the quadratic equation with a lead coefficient of one whose roots are minus three-fifths and one-half. Now, the part about lead coefficient of one, I'll talk about that at the end. Don't worry about that yet. These are the roots. Okay, that means they're the answers like this. So the first step of working backwards is to say that to go one step, to go backwards from this, it must have been x plus 